Well, we're going to work with uh, equations and formulas today. And uh, what we're really going to do is pay particular attention to the units like we did last week when we were canceling units. You've all evaluated formulas of some type before, but this time we're going to focus on how to evaluate formulas while paying attention to the units. There's a couple of uh, things that we want to make sure to accomplish. One, we're just going to evaluate formulas, which you've all done before, but you probably haven't substituted the units into formulas when you've done it before. And that's actually pretty important because it does two things. One, it tells you the correct units on your result, which sometimes can get lost. And two, it will tell you if your formula is written incorrectly because your dimensional units won't make sense when you evaluate. The second thing that we want to do is um, review a little bit of algebra that it's assumed that you've had before, and that's how to rearrange equations a little bit, nothing too fancy, but some basic uh, types of equations so that if the variable you want to work with is not already isolated, that we can isolate the variable that we want algebraically. It's assumed that uh, you've got the algebra skills to do some of that, but we'll review a little bit of it. Now, before we do a couple of examples, fairly short topic today. We're not going to have too many examples. But uh, the first thing that you have to watch out for if you're going to plug values into a formula is this. If you've got mixed matched values of a certain type of quantity, you want to make sure to make them all alike. Now, what I mean by that is this. In a minute, we're going to see an example where there's units of distance that we're going to plug into a formula. Some of the uni units of distance are in centimeters. Some of them are in meters. Some of them could be in kilometers. You can't plug different ways of measuring the same units into a formula. You have to convert one or more of them to make sure that all the units of any type, length, for example, are all the same. You wouldn't want to plug gallons and quarts into the same formula. You'd want to convert all gallons or all quarts. So that's the first thing to watch for with the quantities that you want to substitute into a formula. If we've got inches and feet as uh, our known values, we should convert all of them to inches or all of them to feet. It usually doesn't matter which one, but we certainly would want them all the same. And then I've got some especially good news for you today. Starting today, I'm going to give you a much simpler significant digit rule. And from this point forward, you can use this shortcut significant digit rule. And you're going to love it. This is going to make your day. Okay. From now on, and we're going to do this because it's practical. It's not perfectly correct, but this is what most uh, trades do when dealing with significant digits. When you're dealing with a formula, all you do is look at all the numbers that you're plugging into the formula. It doesn't matter whether you're adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing, exponents or radicals. All you care about is you're going to look for the one with the fewest number of sig digs, and that's how many sig digs your result will have. So we're going to use the rule for multiplication and division for everything from now on. All you do is look at everything, choose the one with the fewest sig digs, and that's how many to keep in your answer. So we are not going to stop and evaluate sig digs after every operation anymore. It's not practical, even though it is correct. It's not very practical. We're just going to keep plenty of sig digs until the last step and then cut it off at the last step and be done with it. OK. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of this. First one, we're going to start out with a very simple formula. What we want to evaluate is the formula x equals vt. where v is equal to 9.81 meters per second, and t is 9.50 seconds. Now you've got two types of units given up there. The m, of course, means meters, which means you've got a unit of length. Is there any other values up there that involve a unit of length besides the 9.81? No. The other units that are up there are seconds. The V has units of seconds in it, and the T has units of seconds in it. But they're both in units of seconds, and so it's no problem. If T, for example, were in minutes, while V contained seconds, then we'd have a little problem. We'd have to switch one over. But we're just going to leave them the way that they are. So since X is equal to V times T, we can just substitute those in. 
And now we're going to pay attention to the units, and they cancel just like they would when we were doing conversions. So V is equal to 9.81 meters per second, which means we're going to write that as 9.81 meters per, again, the slash sign means your division bar, so it's going to be 9.81 meters over one second. We don't have to put the one in there, but we'll do it for completeness. So we have 9.81 meters over seconds. Now we're not doing any converting, we're just multiplying that by the value of t times t, which is 9.50 seconds. Now when we multiply this out, what's going to happen to your units of seconds? They're going to cancel out, just as they did when we were doing a conversion. And so when we multiply 9.81 times 9.50, we're going to get a result. And how many sig digs can we keep on this? Three. We can keep three. We started out with. Uh, our two values that we're plugging in are 9.81 and 9.50. Both have 3, so we're limited to 3. And uh, anybody come up with anything there? 93.2. And the only units that are left here are meters. And you're done. Now, that would mean, as far as the dimensional correctness of this, that would mean that the value of x had better be a length. Because when we canceled off the units, we were left with units of length, which means x better be a length. Now, if x was supposed to be a voltage or a velocity or a force, something's wrong. But it turned out to be a length. Everybody's happy. We want to evaluate h, which means h is the one we want to find. Cal is for calories. It's a good question. Cal are units of calories, which are uh, um, a unit from uh, physics. You'll come across that when you take your physics course. Exactly. We have non-matching units of mass here. We've got grams and we have kilograms. We either have to change C so that those grams become kilograms, which we could do, or it would be a little bit easier to just take M and convert it to grams. So let's do that. If we just go off to the side here, and this is a conversion, you can do this any way that you want to, but ultimately m is going to be equal to 2.500 kilograms to grams. How many does that become? That's right. Kilo is 10 to the third or 1,000, so it becomes 2,500 grams. And you could do that conversion any way you wanted to. We won't uh, take the space to do it here, but that should be old news by now. OK, now we can proceed. So h is equal to m, which is 2,500 grams times c. Now c, the units we have to be a little bit careful with, 0 0.150 calories per. And the units in the denominator here are grams times degrees Celsius. And we're going to multiply that by T. And in this case, T is 105.0 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to do the, we could multiply that out and find out what the numerical value of H is, certainly. But let's look at what the units on H are first. Well, what happens in our units here? Grams cancels. Now do you see why that had to be in grams instead of kilograms? If that was still in kilograms, we get no canceling. So since it's in grams, we can cancel those off. Also, degrees Celsius cancels. And the only, only units left on H will be calories. And so now we can multiply that out. We'll multiply 2,500 by 0 0.150 times 105.0. And we can keep how many sig digs here? Three. H has three, C has three, and T has four. So we can keep three, and you end up with 39,400. And your units that survived all that canceling are calories. Look good?
Okay, well, the first thing you need to do when you scan this over with your eyes is what are you on the lookout for? Yeah, you're looking for unmatched units. And here you've got units of grams, which all match, but you've got units of length. K involves meters, but R involves centimeters. So would you rather switch K so that it's in centimeters, or would you rather switch R so that it's in meters? You could do either, but I would much rather switch R because the units are much simpler. There they are. <clears throat> OK, so which one do we need to switch so we get better matching here? Let's switch over R. Instead of calling R 150.0 centimeters, let's switch it over to meters. And what will it become? What is it? 1.5. 1 1.5, 1 right? Centa means? 10 to the negative 2, so that means it's uh, going to get s actually smaller, 1.500 for sigdig there. So 1.500 meters. OK, now we get better unit alignment. Now, before we go any further, is everybody OK with why that's 1.500? OK, well, now we can substitute in. Now we've got all of our units matching. And so. We have F equals the square root. Now note in this case that this formula is automatically talking about the principal root. It's already talking about the positive root because if this formula wanted both the positive and negative roots, it would put a plus or minus in front. Since it just puts square root, we're assuming positive root. So F is equal to M1. M1 is 2.50 times 10 to the third. grams times m2. m2 is 1.20 times 10 to the third grams. And we're going to multiply that by k. k is 9.20. times 10 to the negative fifth, and these are meters cubed over gram squared. So what we can do is we can put that all over gram squared. And now that's all divided by, that's all over. Notice that up here, the way this shook out, we've got meters cubed over gram squared. Since that's over gram squared, that really means that gram squared is down here in the denominator along with r, which is 1.500 meters. Since k said that uh, g squared is in the basement, we can just put it down below there right along, uh, alongside our value of r, 1.500 meters. OK, let's take a look at the units. What do you see happens, first of all? All the grams cancel. We've got grams times grams on top, and that's equivalent to gram squared. So it cancels with the denominator. This is really just gram times gram. So those are gone. And one of the meters cancels. You've got meters cubed on top with meters on the bottom. And so that one's gone, and this one gets reduced to meters squared. So our overall units of the radicand, the value inside the radical, will be meters squared. So OK, let's figure out what that radicand is. F is equal to the square root of. I'll give you a minute to work all that out on your calculator. 2.50 times 10 to the third times 1.20 times 10 to the third times 9.20 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 1.500. Did you get it? Yep. You should get 184. 
If I get 184, okay, good. If you got maybe uh, 18,400 or some other zeros on the end, make sure that you're not typing times 10 in here. You're just hitting the EE button on those uh, exponents. 184, and your units inside there are meters squared, like we said a minute ago. Now the last step is to take the square root. You take the square root of number, and you take the square root of your units. So the square root of that number, how many sig digs we can keep? Three. We were given three in all of our uh, input data, and so we can keep three. That gives us 13.6 is right on. And the square root of meter squared is meters. So it's 130, or sorry, 13.6 meters. That's the value of F. Hopefully F was a length. If F was supposed to be something else, something went wrong. Sometimes we need to rearrange. If your equation isn't solved for the desired variable, you need to rearrange it first. Now you can plug in your numbers and then solve for the variable you want, but it's far easier to make a mistake doing that, and it's a lot more writing. All right, again, we'll start out with a <clears throat> short example. We want to solve this equation for t. x is equal to 1 half gt squared, where x is 28.5 meters and g is 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, here we know x and we know g. t is the one we want. Unfortunately, that, that equation is not set up to give you t. It's set up to give you x. Let's get rid of the half by multiplying both sides by 2. Good call. Let's multiply both sides by 2. So <coughs> 2 x is going to equal 2 times 1 half g t squared. These cancel on the right, and we're left with 2 x equals g t squared. OK. Looks good. Divide by, divide by g. g is attached to the t by multiplication, so we want to get rid of it by dividing. And with that, we're left with 2x over g equals t squared. Yep, well, then you're home free because we may want uh, both values. In fact, I'm going to change my mind and say that we'll take plus or negative. That'll be uh, the better habit to get into. So plus or minus the square root of 2x over g. Now we know that t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2x over g. And we can start with that. So let's continue. Now we can evaluate. So t equals 2 times x, which is 28.5 meters. Good. Over g. Now, in the bottom of this fraction, we have 9.81 meters per second squared. But what do you suppose happened to this second squared? We're already in the bottom of this fraction, and it's per second squared. So where do you suppose they're ultimately going to end up? They're going to end up in the top. The meters and the s squared are on opposite sides of the division sign, so our s squared is ultimately going to end up on top. Here's why that is. A little scribble work. Don't put this in your notes. I just want you to understand why that works out. Think about it like this. You could have said, I'm going to just write, kind of scribble this out, give you an explanation, plus or minus the square root of 2 times 28.5 meters 
over. Now, wouldn't you agree that dividing by g is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of g? Right? Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. That means 1 over g is equal to the reciprocal of this, which is second squared over 9.81 meters. So when we do this, when we're dividing it by g, it's the same as multiplying it by 1 over g. Well, when we put in 1 over g, our 9.81 meters ends up down here, and your second squared end up in the top. That's the reason, because you're dividing by, you're really just dividing by this fraction right here. You're dividing by meters per second squared, so that's the same as multiplying by second squared per meter. Does that make sense? That is the trickiest thing about this whole process. Make sure that as you do the homework for today, anytime you come across units like that, make sure you're checking your answers as you go for the odds so that you catch yourself and your units all cancel out the right way. Okay, well, back to the original problem. Dividing by meters per second squared is the same as multiplying by second squared per meter. Now, what happens to our units? Meters cancel. And we can do this computation. Our units inside the radicand are simply s squared. Two times 28.5 divided by 9.81 will give you a radicand of 5.81. Does that work out to be exactly 5.81, or is there a few extra sig digs? 5.8104. Again, we'll leave a few extras, because in our last step, we want to cut it back to 3. So we won't introduce any rounding error by cutting it too much now. So we'll leave, you could leave 5.81039. You could leave as many as you want. Just leave plenty. And those units are second squared. And so t will be equal to plus or minus. We can keep three significant digits. How about 2.41? And our units are seconds. Plus or minus 2.41 seconds. All right. How's that one look? Good? OK. I have two more I want to do with you. I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to see what you can do with this one. Well, the first thing you should do is solve it for t. We'd have to do that by isolating t on the right side. We'll begin by subtracting v naught or v sub 0. On the left side, we're left with v sub f minus v naught. That has to equal a t. Now, of course, you're home free from there. You've got t almost solved. What do you need to do? Divide both sides by a. And we end up with v f minus v naught over a equals t. OK, so we got it solved for t. It's a good start. OK, well, what's the second problem you face in this mess? Yeah, we've got inconsistent units there. We've got v naught and vf that have length units of feet, but a has length units of kilometers. Also, a is in minutes, but both v naught and vnf are in seconds. Now, you could convert v naught and vf over to kilometers and minutes, but why convert both of those when you can just convert A? And then you've only got one to do instead of two. So let's convert A over. Now, this is a conversion, just like we did on uh, Thursday. Let's convert A. A is equal to 25.0 kilometers per minute squared. We want that in feet per finish this conversion here. All right, so we need to get rid of the kilometers. Let's put kilometers down below, 
and we want to go to feet. So how would you recommend getting to feet from kilometers? Yeah, we'll go from kilometers to miles, miles to feet. So I'm going to use MI for miles. One mile is 1.61 kilometers. Then I'm going to go from uh, miles to feet. That gets rid of kilometers. It also gets rid of miles. Now I'm in feet per minute squared. That's not good enough. I want feet per second squared. So I need another conversion on here. It's going to be squared. I don't want minutes anymore. I better put them in the top. I want to go to seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. What do I need to do here? Square it. And so once we're done with that conversion, we'll have our units of A. Did you get 22.77? Okay, we're going to leave it as 22.77. Again, we're leaving extra sig digs here. And your units on A turned out to be feet per second squared. So we can go up here and tuck that off. A is equal to 22.77 feet per second squared. And now we'll use that when we plug into that formula because now we'll get good unit cancellation, otherwise we wouldn't. And we can finish up the problem. So we solved it for t. Now we've got all of our units matching. Questions about this conversion, or how's that look, OK? All right, well, then we can go and solve for t. So t is equal to vf minus v naught. That means 80. 5.3 feet per second minus, we're doing this subtraction first, 55 feet per second. And we're going to divide that whole thing by 22.77. These are feet per second squared, so I can take feet and put the second squared up onto the top. Now, why did I lump these two in parentheses and leave the feet squared as separate, or feet per second, feet per second as separate units? Why did I leave these two together for now? Drew? We got to do that first. We can't start mixing these units and throwing them around until we get this turned into one quantity. So now we can do that subtraction, and we get 85.3 minus 55.0. That's 30.3. Now, those are feet per second. So we can put our seconds down below. Feet per second times, down below we've got 22.7. and second squared on the top. You you normally would do multiplication and division first, except um, a fraction like this has implied grouping symbols. In other words, when you've got a fractional formula like this, you always figure out what the top value is first, and then you divide by whatever the bottom value is. Okay, so that's a good point. Uh, whenever you see this fraction bar where you inside of a formula like this, there's always an implied set of parentheses right there. We figure out what the top value is and the bottom value first. I thought you were going to ask about these units. But is everybody OK with why we get feet per second here? And after we've lumped them into one, then we can call it feet over seconds. Does that look good? OK, now I'm getting some more confident looks. No questions? No? All right. Well, now we get unit canceling all over the place. What happens for starters? Feet are gone. 
one of the seconds is gone. We've got seconds squared over seconds. Those are gone. And now we can divide 30.3 by 22.77. And we get three sig digs, 1.33, and your units are seconds. T, a lowercase t, is almost invariably the abbreviation for time. And so it makes sense that we get units of seconds. Capital T is almost always temperature, lowercase t is almost always time.